Welcome back guys. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace your factory HID components with less expensive aftermarket alternatives. Now, before we even get started, I do want to acknowledge that OEM components are usually of higher quality than aftermarket alternatives. However, sometimes they're not within your budget and you really just need working headlights. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. Okay, so we're going to get started with the components that we're going to need for the swap. Now, the first thing in a headlight system is your bulbs. In my case, I'm actually not going to be replacing the bulbs in my car as they're still okay. For you guys, if you are replacing your bulbs, you just need to know your bulb size. Bulb sizes come in a bunch of standard different sizes and aftermarket parts will swap directly one for one with your factory bulbs. So that part's really easy. Just know your bulb size. So the next thing in line are your igniters and your ballasts. And these things work together to convert the electricity of your vehicle into something that will excite the xenon gases in your bulbs. Now these are universal igniters and ballasts that I got from the retrofit source and they come with connectors called amp connectors. Now these connectors will not connect or likely won't connect to anything in your vehicle and therefore on both ends for the supply and the output of your ballast and igniters we're going to need some sort of adapters to make these things work with our vehicle. And so the next thing you see pictured here is an adapter and this little adapter harness basically takes the amp outputs from your igniters that you see here and has a plug on the other end that will plug into the bulbs of your vehicle. Now in my case I have a Volkswagen and it uses D2S bulbs so on this end here this large connector will plug into a D2S bulb and on this side like I said we have amp connectors that will connect to our igniters. So now that we have the bulb end of things covered we need to supply some electricity to our ballast and so this is where the relay harness comes into play. This relay harness is going to be connected directly to our battery and an input from our factory headlight system is going to turn the relays on and divert electricity to our aftermarket ballast and this is going to bypass all of the other wiring, ballast, igniters from our factory system. So this whole thing will work together to light up our bulbs. In the previous clip, you may have also noticed these black rubber grommets. We're going to be installing these in the back of our stock headlights where the big caps are that you unscrew to access your bulbs. You can see that I've taken the bulb harness and I've fed it through the grommet because as I mentioned, this is going to be installed in that back cap and our harness is going to go through the cap and plug into the back of our bulb. Now to get the grommets over top of your wiring harness, you're going to have to unpin these amp connectors. And it's not tricky, but it can be a little bit tedious to do. If you do a Google search for how to take apart amp connectors, you'll find a great little thread on there on a forum that shows you guys how to do that. There's a couple plastic clips inside and you're going to need a really small screwdriver to pop out the pins. And then you can simply just slide the one end through the grommet and then put the pins back together. So we're going to be starting our installation with the relay harness, which I have here. And as I mentioned, the relay harness is going to be taking power from the battery and distributing it to the new ballast. And therefore we have a power connection and my harness is conveniently labeled. It says battery there and there's a plus sign indicating that we're going to be using 12 volts power for this relay harness. And also conveniently for me, my fuse panel here next to my battery has a bus bar on the front providing 12 volt power. So this ring terminal for me will get hooked up right directly to this bus bar and I'm gonna get 12 volts power to my relay harness. If you guys don't have that on your fuse panel, you may have to just jump right off the battery. And so you're gonna take the 12 volt positive post off your battery and connect this to that, providing your relay harness with 12 volts power. So next up is our ground wire and we're gonna be picking up a chassis ground for this wire here. It's a little bit difficult to see, but I have a convenient location down here where it's a common ground for a bunch of electrical components. I'm going to be using that, so I'm going to hook that up next. So after we've established power and ground, the next thing the harness is asking for is an input, and this is going to tell the harness when to turn the headlights on and off. Now you have a few options for this. If you know that your wiring from your headlight switch all the way up to your headlights is perfectly fine, you can grab power and ground from wires that are going directly into your headlight. You can splice directly into those and then of course you can splice directly into this wiring harness or make a little pigtail connector that fits in here and plug into here. The other option is if you don't know 
if your wiring is bad from your headlight switch all the way up to your headlights or there's something kind of funny going on in between, you can, guys can run a switched power all the way up to the front of the vehicle here and that's what I did. So I actually ran this wire directly from my headlight switch through the firewall and then basically have a hot switched power right here that I can feed into this wire. And so now I bypassed all the factory wiring in case something's bad and I have a hot switched 12 volt wire right here that I'm gonna wire directly into this plug. So the relay harness has two more connections that need to be made and these are the outputs to the ballast. Now, because we don't yet have our ballast installed, we're gonna put these aside and we'll get back to these in a minute. Installing the ballast is pretty easy. Most aftermarket ballasts come with a little bracket that allow you to screw the ballast down somewhere in the engine bay. You're going to wanna find a spot that remains dry most of the time your ballast should be sealed. However, it's still best practice to find a dry spot. I'm gonna locate my driver's side ballast under my air filter. And my passenger side ballast is located behind my passenger headlight. And for those of you guys who have factory HID systems, your ballast is probably located somewhere in, around, or under your factory headlight. Now mine is located under my headlight, which makes it very difficult to get at, but I should be able to reach the connector just to be able to unplug them. And so this brings us to one of the last few things that we need to do. And we need to get this adapter harness somehow into our headlight. Now the easiest way to go about doing this is to remove the cover off the back of your headlight where you would normally access your bulb. So mine just simply twists off and comes out. What we're gonna be doing to this cover is drilling a hole directly in the back, fishing these wires through, and then sealing it up with the grommet. So after some quick work with the hole saw, you can see now that I have the adapter harness pushed through the stock cap with the grommet in place. And at the same time, I removed my stock igniter. So I just reached into the back of my headlight and mine just simply unscrews and pulls out. Now it's time to install the adapter harness. And I'm working with very little space here behind my headlight and in between my fuse box. And so one little tip here to make things easier so that your connector slides nice and easy in and out of the grommet, you can apply a little bit of silicone to this surface and that makes things slide a lot easier. So with the adapter harness pulled all the way out, I'm going to reach into the back of my headlight and see if I can get it clipped over top of my bulb. So with our connector into place, now I can just twist the cap back in, locking it into place leaving the back ends of my connectors exposed, and these will be connected to the igniter from the aftermarket ballast. So with the driver's side done, the passenger side is just simply rinse and repeat. I have the adapters plugged into the back of my bulbs inside my headlight housing. The wires are coming out the back cap like I showed you on the driver's side. Those two wires are plugged into my igniter from my ballast, and the last wires to hook up are those wires that I said we'd get back to. So a few steps back when we were looking at the relay harness, there was these plugs here that power the ballast. I finally plugged those into the ballast and we're ready to go. And at this point, you're just gonna wanna tie everything down, use some zip ties to manage all your wires, make sure none of them will rub against anything like your accessory belt or any other moving part in your engine bay. And then we can go test out our headlights. So now we're just gonna do a very quick test to make sure that all of our work was done correctly simply by turning on our headlights. So now that both headlights have come on, you can see that we've done our work correctly. And by bypassing the stock wiring harness, ballast, igniters, etc., you can be sure that there'll be no more flickering or whatever problems that you were having in the first place. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this video helps some of you guys who maybe just can't afford OEM components at the moment, or maybe you're just tired of chasing around electrical gremlins in your complicated OEM headlight system. Either way, leave your comments down below and be sure to subscribe and like this video if it helped you guys out.